You go to cancerbase.org mm -hmm. on Facebook and it says, do you have cancer? What kind do you have? What stage are you in? Where do you live? And it creates a global map of people with your cancer, mm -hmm. where they live, and the second and third phase of that program will tell you how those other people are being treated so that you can compare what, you, what your situation is with them. Because some of the most important big data is what happened to your parents and where do you live. Mm -hmm. Those two pieces of information are more important than all your genome unless you have a single gene disease, which you probably got from your parents who had the same thing. If you don't know what happened to your parents and we don't know where you live, then we're not going to intervene in the right way at the right time. You know, it's funny, you know, if you follow some of the election coverage, there's been reports of companies like Catalyst, which have, you know, down to the level door, doorbell uh, analysis of every voter, you know, whether they voted, what party registration, but also where they voted in previous, you know, what magazines they subscribe to. We have that for voters, but we don't have that for cancer history. I mean, Ken, you, you've been working with the most not homogenous, but a, but a group of, 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 of people that were, have been consented to a lot of data information, and personal information about themselves. Uh, how unusual is that? How do we export that model to, to other sort of uh, public research? So what we've tried to do in Utah um, is to, uh, both for the purposes of addressing cancer, but really for most of the serious diseases, is to try to marshal all of the data that we can legitimately uh, uh, have access to. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, uh, the, uh, you mentioned voting. Um, we we uh, have agreements with our voter registration uh, office in Utah to get all of the voter registration data from the population. Uh, we also get it for all the driver's license, license uh, holders in, in the state of Utah and we have a legal system for uh, doing this. And I mention this only because the, the insights about where the risks are for cancer or any other disease can really come from almost any type of data. So you mention about knowing who your parent, what your parents' risk was and, and where you live. Well, we need to be able to look wherever we can look to get that information. And so our strategy has been to uh, develop these relationships with our departments of health uh, and other organizations um, so that we, we, um, are, they are able to share the data with us. We, we create uh, uh, this uh, amazing uh, connection of all the data and you can create that big data sphere that you can query and there are peculiar stream, I'll call it peculiar streams of data that you may not have thought about that would go into it for the purposes of doing cancer surveillance, but they all contribute to it. So if I know where you, where you vote, I know where, what district you're in, I know where you, I know where you live, <laughs> um, and from that I can, I can attribute a great deal of information about you, and that's another uh, 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 piece of information. So we're trying to go from the genome to the menome um, and, uh, and learn as much about you as, you, as we can. And, and just to be clear, we, we are very sensitive. You mentioned consent earlier. So we have all sorts of protections about how we do that in a way that, that um, makes everybody comfortable and, and provides the benefits.